In this video, you're going to learn how to graph absolute value functions using transformations, including horizontal stretches and horizontal shrinks. And so let's go through five examples together, see if you can practice some of these on your own. But let's start with this first example, y equals the absolute value of this quantity here, 2x minus 4. So how would we describe the transformations and how would we get an accurate graph? Well, the first thing you might want to do is look at the parent function, this y equals absolute value of x. Whatever we put in, when we take the absolute value, it always makes it positive, right? So absolute value of negative 2 is 2, absolute value of negative 1 is 1, 0, 1, and 2. See, always positive. That's our parent function. Now, when you look at what's inside of the absolute value bars here, this may seem a little counterintuitive at first, but you actually want to think of the reverse of the PEMDAS. Like you're actually going to be doing the adding and subtracting before you do the multiplying or dividing. And it has to do with the composition of functions, if you've learned composition of functions. So in this case, like think for a moment if I was going to graph y equals uh, absolute value of x minus 4. We know that whatever is inside of the absolute value bars, what's grouped with the x is going to affect the x values, okay, the horizontal direction. When you add and subtract, that picks up the graph and shifts it, okay, and when you multiply or divide, that's going to stretch or shrink it, okay, but it's going to act on the x values when it's grouped with the x, but it has the opposite effect, okay, when it's grouped with the x. So this minus 4 would actually shift the graph right 4. So what that does is you're going to be adding 4 to all these x-coordinates. So if I do that, this is going to be 2, negative 1 plus 4 is 3, 0 plus 4 is 4, 5, and 6. I'm just going to cross out the old x values. Now imagine if you then replace this x with 2x, you would end up with the function that we have here. Okay, so what came first? Was it the 2x or was it the subtracting 4? Well, you can see it was the subtracting 4 was what happened first. So we would describe this as a a horizontal translation, right 4, okay, or you could just write right 4, I'll abbreviate here, followed by, okay, now we replace this x with 2x. Remember how we said when it's grouped with the x, it has the opposite effect? So it looks like you're multiplying the x's by 2. It's actually going to multiply the x's by the reciprocal 1 half. So we would call this a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half. So I'll just write horizontal shrink by one half, just abbreviate a little bit. Okay, so what that means is I'm gonna multiply all the x values by a half, that's gonna shrink it in the x direction. So this would be one, uh, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, and three. Let's cross out those old x values. Now you can see we've got our coordinates here. So we've got one comma two, 1 1.5 comma one, uh, two zero, uh, 2.5 comma one, and 3 comma 2. And so there you can see it's a little bit steeper because we did a horizontal shrink, okay? And you can see that it's not really shifted right 4 here. It was originally was shifted right 4, but then we squeezed it towards the y-axis, and that's why we, can, we have an x-intercept here at 2. So a lot of moving parts there. Let's look at another example and, and dive into this further. So for number 2 now, we've got y equals 3, times the absolute value of the quantity 1 half x plus 1. So I like to think about working from the inside out, okay, when I do these transformations. And again, remember how we said that whatever's grouped with the x, it kind of lies, some teachers say, like it, it lies, meaning it's like the opposite. And the other thing that you want to take into account is that we're going to be doing like the reverse of the PEMDAS. So we're going to be doing the adding and subtracting before the multiplying and dividing. And again, it has to do with that composition of functions. Uh, we could think about a, a function like this, y equals absolute value of x plus 1. Then if I had replace x with 2x, uh, sorry, 1 half x, you can see what came first. Well, the plus 1, and then I replace the x with the 1 half x. So it's actually the adding or subtracting that was first. So this plus 1 is actually going to shift the graph to the left one unit, right? Remember, it has the opposite effect. Adding and subtracting is a shift. Multiplying or dividing would be like a stretch or a shrink. Just remember, it's the opposite when it's grouped with the x. So we already know our basic table for our parent function, y equals absolute value of x. It always makes these values positive, okay? And now we're saying we're going to shift left 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 from all the x values. That'll shift it left 1. Cross out the old ones. 
the one half x is actually gonna multiply by the reciprocal. It's gonna multiply all the x values by two, which is a horizontal stretch. So I'm gonna multiply all these x values by two, cross out the old ones, and then this three here, it's not group of the x, right? So that means it's gonna be acting on the y values, the vertical direction, it has the same effect. So remember when it's group of the x, it has like the opposite effect. When it's not group of the x, it acts on the y's, it has the same effect. What I mean by that is this three is larger than one, it's gonna be a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Remember, multiplying and dividing are stretching and shrinking, adding and subtracting are picking up the graph and like translating or shifting it. So this is gonna be a stretch, a vertical stretch by a factor of three, which means I'm gonna multiply all the y values by three, since the y controls the vertical direction. Okay, now we've got our table. Let's see if we can plot our graph. So negative six, six would be right about here. Okay, negative four, three is gonna be right about here. Uh, negative two, zero is gonna be here. Zero, three is here, and two, six is right here. Okay, so you can see there's our absolute value graph. Your teacher might ask you questions like domain and range. Like here the domain would be all real numbers and the range would be y is greater than or equal to zero. Remember, domain are the x values, range are the y values. But in this case, we're focusing on the transformation. So let's take a look at three more examples. See if you can do some of these on your own. Okay, you may notice that I try to make every example a little bit different to hit on different uh, features of these transformations. So see if you can try some of these as we go along. But for number three now, Look what we've got here, y equals the absolute value of negative x plus two plus one. Now, again, I like to work from the inside out. So starting inside of these absolute value bars, remember how we said it's like the reverse of the PEMDAS? So we would do this adding two first before we do the multiplying by this negative one. The plus two, remember when you add or subtract, it's like a shift of the graph, but it has the opposite effect. So the plus two is actually gonna shift the graph left two which means I'm gonna subtract two from all of these x values. Okay, cross off the old ones. Now the negative x, when you multiply the x values by negative one, that's gonna reflect the graph over the y axis. Okay, so again, if you're keeping track of the transformations, I would say shift left two first, then reflect over the y axis. Okay, so that means we're gonna make multiply all the x values by negative one, so that would be four, positive three, positive two, positive one, and zero. And then lastly, we're gonna shift up one. Now notice that this one is not grouped with the x. That means it's gonna affect the y values. It's gonna have the same effect. So plus one, we would go up one. If it was minus one, we would go down one. Remember, when it's grouped with the x, it has the opposite effect. So plus two, you're actually going negative two or to the left, right? Or if you're multiplying by two, you're actually gonna be dividing by two or multiplying by the reciprocal one half. So in this case, let's see, so if we shift up one, that's gonna affect all the y values, because up one uh, affects the y, so that's gonna be three, two, one, a two, and three. Cross the old ones out. Let's plot these points now. We've got four, three, which is right about here. Three, two, which is right about here. Two, one, which is right here. A one, two is right here, and zero, three is right here. There's our absolute value graph, that V-shaped graph. So let's look at number four now. What do you think about this one? Again, I would start from the inside, work my way out. If there's one thing that you remember uh, or take away from this video, always do the vertical shift up and down last, okay? That's important, but if you wanna follow my method, like, see, the thing is here, I could do this negative first and this one third second or the one third first and the negative second. That's not gonna affect the overall graph. It's gonna be the same graph in the end. Uh, so there's more than one correct answer to describe the transformations and it will still yield the same graph. But if you uh, do this one first, you're gonna get a, a different uh, result than a lot of the cases, okay, a lot of the problems. So starting from the inside out, one third x, remember this has the reciprocal effect. You're actually multiplying the x values by three. So I would say this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of three, which means I'm gonna multiply all the x values by three. This negative here, it's not group of the x, which means it acts on the y values, which means if the y values are multiplied by negative one, that's gonna reflect it over the x axis, right? So I would say horizontal stretch by a factor of three, reflect over the x axis, which means we multiply all the y values by 
negative 1, so this would be negative, 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 okay. And then the minus 2 is going to shift the graph down 2. Notice it's not grouped with the x, so it's acting on the y values, the y coordinates. It has the same effect. Minus 2 is down 2. So I'm going to subtract 2 from all the y's because y controls up and down. Cross out the old one. So now we've got our coordinates. Let's see if we can plot these negative 6, negative 4, right about here. Negative 3, negative 3, right about here. 0, negative 2, uh, 3, negative 3, and 4, 5, 6, negative 4. Four, right about here. Okay, so there's our there's our graph roughly. This point's a little bit a little bit lower. It should be right here. Okay, so you can see there should be a more sharp V shape, but that's the graph. Let's do one more example. See if you can do this last one on your own. Before we do this last example together, I just wanted to mention that if you've been following my videos for some time and you like the way that I explain things, you want to go deeper in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra check out the links in the description below to my video courses for sale. I go through a typical Algebra 1 course and a typical Algebra 2 course sequentially building on previous concepts, going through different examples. I give you some examples you can practice on your own. We go through the concepts. It's uh, very comprehensive, so check out those uh, courses. And let's do this last example together. So again, I like to work from the inside out. And when I'm looking at the inside of these absolute value bars, I'm thinking I have to do the reverse of that PEMDAS. And again, it has to do with composition of functions. Like if my function was uh, f of x is equal to negative x, and then I had g of x is equal to f of x plus 1, what does this x plus 1 tell me to do? It tells me to replace x with the quantity x plus 1. So what came first? Uh, the chicken or the egg? No, no, what came first? The negative came first, right? Okay, then followed by the x plus 1. Normally in our mind we're thinking parentheses first, and then multiplication comes after that, the PEMDAS, right, the order of operations. But you can see here the way we're building up this function, it's actually the reverse. We're going to start with the negative, and when that negative, you're multiplying the x values by negative 1, you're reflecting it over the y-axis, right? So in order to do that, we have to multiply all these x values by negative 1, okay, that reflects it over the y-axis. The plus 1 here is going to, remember, if you're adding or subtracting, it's a shift, okay, but remember, it has the opposite effect, so the plus 1 is going to shift left 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 from each of these x values. The 1 half is not grouped with the x, right, it's on the outside, that's going to act on the y values, it's going to have the same effect. What I mean by that is the 1 half is going to multiply all the y values by 1 half, it's going to be a vertical shrink by a factor of one half. So I'm multiplying all the y's by one half. And then lastly, you always want to do the vertical shift up and down last. This plus three, it's going to affect the y values. It's going to have the same effect. Plus three is just like you would think, up three. So I'm going to add three to all the y coordinates here and cross out the old one. So now let's plot these points here. We've got one comma four, which is right here. We've got a 0, 3.5, which is right about here. We've got negative 1, 3, which is right about here. We've got negative 2, 3.5, which is right about here. And we have negative 3, 4, which is right about here. Okay, so there's our absolute value graph. And you got it. So if you want to learn more about transformations, not just of absolute value graphs, but any graph, it might be a cubic graph or a square root graph or any type of parent function, you can apply these transformations to, and I talk about that in that video right there. Follow me over to that video, we'll get some more practice and you'll learn how to go deeper with these transformations. I'll see you there.